Now there's really no better example to show the difference in grading standards between these two companies. And that's not to say that PSA is universally more difficult, but when it comes to small imperfections like a print line, CGC is going to allow it to still potentially get a gem mint, or PSA is going to withhold it. And that's one of the reasons why there's such a value difference between those two grading companies for a lot of these chase cards. Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. In this video, I wanted to address a lot of internet uncertainty and price instability that we're seeing with CGC 10 cards in the marketplace right now. And I know there's been a lot of changing dynamics here, but it seems like just about nobody out there really knows what a CGC 10 is or how really to value it comparatively to other graded cards. So there's a few things, a few factors that I think are important here in this conversation that I wanted to break down and at least give my perspective and my insights on, but I definitely welcome yours in the commentary here as well. If you have some comments, leave them down below and let me know what you think on any of these points. Now, this first point will come as a shock to just about nobody watching this channel, but the first edition base set Charizard and CGC 10 has experienced probably the most profound decrease in value in just a short couple of months. In fact, going back a little ways, we had a sale for $168,000 on PWCC's auction platform, and I have to assume that that price was shill bid and never actually paid for because it was such an outlandish price comparatively to others on the market that I really just can't take it seriously. Just a few weeks later though, we saw another copy hit the market on eBay this time, and this one sold for $76,300, which we could say is a more realistic price, but still substantially overvalued where the market is today, just a few weeks later. After this one, we saw one hit golden auctions, kind of hitting all the different auction platforms in succession, and this one sold for $66,000. That price drop trend is simply continuing. Well now, as of last week, we saw yet another copy sell, and this time another low price of $41,250. If we throw out that original PWCC auction in the six figures, we see a high price of $76,300 at the beginning of August, we're talking August 7th that sale was, and now just six weeks later, just six weeks, the card is already devalued $35,050 down to that $41,250 price point. Again, just last week, September 23rd. Now, it's true that there have been a number of other cards that have experienced similar drops in values from their all-time peaks to where we are today in the 2023 marketplace, but to see that level of decline in such a short period of time, just talking a matter of weeks, is incredibly uncommon, uh, especially for a card like the first edition base at Charizard that's already seen substantial decline from its peak of popularity and all of the hype surrounding 2020. So this is just one of the many examples of that decline that we're seeing with a lot of those CGC 10s. And this trend isn't exclusive to just Charizard. We're seeing the same trajectory for a lot of high-end chase cards. In fact, the first edition Neo Genesis Lugia in CGC 10 has experienced something very similar. Uh, there is a number of different sales in rapid succession over the last couple months, going back to July and now into September. And over that period, we've seen prices start out pretty high, up at $17,685, dropping all the way down to $8,702 with a sale here in early September. So that's again, less than two months to see a decline of $8,983 or over 50%. So given these examples and many others, I think most people would agree that there's not really a debate about the declining prices of the new CGC 10s, but making sense of it is the part that's a bit tricky. And I've seen a lot of opinions and differing ideas on what might be responsible for that. But at least in my mind, I think there are a few very distinguishable factors at work here. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts around this. So first, let's take it back to CGC's decision to change their label and change their grading standards. Now, this was earlier in the year that CGC made this announcement, and part of the announcement was a new grading scale. They would be uh, retiring the perfect 10s and then elevating pristine 10s to their new like standard of highest possible grade, kind of the equivalent of BGS's uh, black label. In addition to that, they would be offering a gem mint grade in which all of their previous 9.5s would be eligible for an immediate upgrade to that 10, and then also adding a new 9.5 called Mint Plus. In my mind, the implementation of CGC's decision to change their grading standards really resulted in three primary issues that the market is working to resolve right now. The first is simply an inconsistency with market memory. 
Now, people that had previously known about CGC or even collected CGC already had it stamped in their mind what a CGC 10 looked like. It was a very prestigious grade and one that was very difficult to acquire. And now with the new 9.5 becoming the Gem Mint 10 standard, it's not exactly the same. And so it's going to take a while for the market to reevaluate what a 10 looks like, but also then how to value the 10 considering that the population growth is substantially more than what it once was. And that leads me to point number two is the saturation. Unlike a lot of other grading companies where the organic slow drip of additional 10s onto the market are trickling in over the years. In fact, some of the cards I'm going to show you and talk about here in a moment had one to three PSA 10 copies added to the population report in the last two or three years, and that's it. But with CGC's decision to upgrade 9.5s, all of them instantly became 10s. So that's a lot of new 10s hitting the market at the exact same time, and that's just a lot for the market to absorb and then to reevaluate the pricing for. And finally is the methodology with which CGC applies their grading standards to the cards that are grading, particularly those in that upper echelon, the Mint Plus 9.5s, the Gem Mint 10s, and the 10 Pristine cards, because typically those would rely upon subgrades to determine which of those categories they rightfully belong into, but in the absence of those subgrades, it can be convoluted and difficult for the end consumer to differentiate what the level of condition actually is or what's going into that. And CGC is known to be one of the grading companies that takes an average of those subgrades to ultimately determine which category a card should be placed in. This is a bit different than PSA. And so one of the things that we see is a lot of the very, very difficult to grade cards in PSA suddenly become more able to earn tens in CGC simply because of the hollow foil surface. Now, if you guys have ever graded with PSA or you've collected high-end set cards with PSA, hollows in particular are a different story entirely than non-hollow cards. And although PSA can be much easier at grading for modern and for non-hollows and for other situations and has some inconsistency problems of their own, when it comes to grading hollow foil surfaces and vintage cards, they are absolutely brutal on print lines and surface scratches. This is like the primary roadblock for a lot of cards from earning PSA 10s. What makes the chase so difficult, but also so fun for some of those cards? Whereas with CGC, a card could receive a nine as a subgrade for the hollow surface and still get a gem mint grade. So it's one very clear distinction between those two grading companies that I think a lot of people don't take into consideration. So what I've done here is I've compiled every first edition hollow set card from base set all the way through Neo Destiny, since those are the sets that I primarily collect, that has a PSA 10 population of 20 or less. And I wanted to compare the numbers. What are the populations like for PSA in comparison to CGC, both looking at Gem Mint 10s. We'll also take a look at the Gem Mint rate on these. And what we're going to find is that every single card is significantly more difficult to acquire that PSA 10 grade than it is in CGC 10. And I think that makes sense because of just the nature of how they go about grading and applying those standards. Should factor into value, and I think that's one of the things the market is realizing. But let's take a look at the first card here. First up, we have Porygon 2, not a very popular card, from Neo Revelation. Neo Revelation is an amazing set, and this card is one of the tougher ones to grade. In PSA 10, it has a population of 20, and there's been about 573 total copies graded. So if we do the math there, that's a gem mint rate of 3.49%. Now inversely with CGC, which has less time to grade, it has seven CGC 10 in its population, but only 111 total cards graded. And so the gem mint rate there is 6.31%, which is almost not quite double the rate of gem mint cards as what PSA sees. Next up, we've got another Neo Revelation card. This time it's Magneton, another one that's not one of the more popular ones. But despite that, very low PSA population with just 20 copies out of 580 graded, receiving that PSA 10 gem mint grade. That makes for a gem mint rate of 3.45%, which is nowhere near the lowest rate on this list either. There's some that are going to dip even below 1%. In terms of CGC 10s, we've got four out of 88 graded, so substantially fewer graded, which makes sense because CGC hasn't been around nearly as long, and that makes for a gem mint rate of 4.55%. So, Pretty close on this one, still a little bit more difficult on PSA though. Looking at Neo Genesis for Alligator with a population in PSA 10 of 20 out of 1,256 cards to grade. This one is extremely difficult to grade and has a gem mint rate of just 1.6%. Now 
Now comparatively, same exact CGC 10 population of 20, despite only having about one fifth as many cards graded at 255. The gem mint rate here is 7.84%, and this helps make sense of why a card would perform so much better in PSA versus CGC. It's just simply a matter of scarcity. Next up, we've got Meganium. This is another Neo Genesis card, which is just notorious for having a print line. Usually it's a singular print line, but even the presence of just that instantly disqualifies or should instantly disqualify a card from receiving that PSA 10 grade. That's why there's only 20 copies in PSA 10 out of 1151 that were graded for a gem mint rate of 1.74%. Now the CGC 10 population is almost equal. It's one fewer at 19 out of just 242 submitted for a gem mint rate of 7.85%. So once again, very strong disparity between those two grading companies. Another one of our low population hollows from Neo Genesis is the Metal Energy, which is probably people's least favorite one from Neo Genesis. That one only has 19 PSA 10 copies out of about 1,000 submitted, 988, for a gem mint rate of 1.92%. CGC 10 population is notably lower at just eight, but again, lower cop total copies submitted at 183. So the gem mint rate here is over twice as much at 4.37%. Then we have Mr. Vis from Neo Revelation, an absolutely beautiful artwork. It's one of my personal favorites. Low population here though in PSA 10 of just 18 out of 661 graded, which makes for a gem mint rate of 2.72%. Now compared to CGC 10, which only has eight copies, it's, it's in the single digits, but the total number graded is only 112. So a gem rate here is 7.14%. Again, substantially higher than PSA. Next is another card that's notoriously difficult to grade, and that's the Slow King from Neo Genesis, which has a current PSA 10 population of just 15, despite almost 2,000 copies being graded. Right now, the count is at 1,980 in the population report, making for a gem mint rate of just 0.76%. Compare that to CGC 10's population of 49, that's a massive difference, especially when we consider that there's only been 464 copies graded with CGC, making that gem mint rate 10.56%. Now there's really no better example to show the difference in grading standards between these two companies. And that's not to say that PSA is universally more difficult, but when it comes to small imperfections like a print line, CGC is going to allow it to still potentially get a gem mint, or PSA is going to withhold it. And that's one of the reasons why there's such a value difference between those two grading companies for a lot of these chase cards. Mixing in a little bit of Neo Discovery, we have Yanma, which has a PSA 10 population of just 14 copies, making it one that's very difficult to find, including one that I still need for my collection. But anyway, there's been 664 copies graded, making a gem mint rate of just 2.11%. Comparatively to CGC, the CGC 10 population report is only five, but there's been very few of these cards actually submitted to CGC, at just 104. That's a gem mint rate of 4.81%. All right, now we're getting into the pinnacle of grading difficulty, at least when it comes to PSA, and that's the Typhlosion 17 from Neo Genesis. Now this card in PSA 10 has only 12 copies, despite having 1,858 total cards come through the grading process. That makes for the lowest, the most competitive, the most difficult gem mint rate out of any card on this list at just 0.65%. Now, when we take a look at CGC 10's population, that's 29 cards, which is already substantially more, despite having significantly fewer copies graded at just 386. That makes for a gem mint rate of 7.89%. Once again, this is one of those examples that I think clearly demonstrates the difference in grading and how print lines and surface scratches might still be viable for a CGC 10, where it's something that's going to be penalized more harshly under PSA's grading scale. Next, we have the runner-up for the lowest PSA 10 population card on this list, and that's Blissey from Neo Revelation. This card has only 11 copies in PSA 10 out of 665 total copies graded. And that's a gem mint rate of 1.65%. Now looking at CGC 10s, this is a really low difficult card to grade in CGC 10 as well with only four copies as 10s out of 140 that have been graded. And that's still a very competitive gem mint rate, that 2.86%. A uh, very difficult card to grade regardless of the grading company. And our final card on this list, the only one that has a population in the single digits in PSA's population report, is the Ampharos from Neo Revelation. Now this card has a population of just 9, despite having 686 copies graded, for a gem mint rate of just 1.31%. 
Now CGC's is also very low at just six copies graded in 10 out of 124 copies graded in total, and that's a gem mint rate of 4.84%. So once again, both are pretty low, but at least twice, maybe about three times as much more difficult to grade in PSA than it is in CGC. Anyway, that's just some of the data that I've been tracking, and that's not to say that either grading company is inherently superior to another. It's really a matter of personal preference and taste, but they do seem to grade differently when it comes to holographic cards. The population reports, I think, support that. So when the internet is abuzz and ablaze with all the conversations about why CGC 10s, or at least certain subsets of 10s, are nose diving so rapidly in price in just a few short weeks or a few short months, I think it's just simply the market reacting to this difference in scarcity when comparing CGC 10s to what they were in the past. Not only has the standard of what a 10 is uh, changed substantially since CGC upgraded 9.5s, but we're also seeing a massive amount of them hitting the market all at the same time. And so that saturation is going to play a role as well. Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts, some of my observations, some of the data that I've been tracking. I'd really like to get your guys' thoughts and commentary on this as well as we unpack what is a CGC 10. It's something that I think the market is still trying to make sense of, and maybe it never will. Maybe it will by next week. That's how quickly the market moves, and sometimes it moves irrationally. But anyway, guys, I'm Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you all with the next video. Bye, everybody.